right behind these children here. Okay, I want all of my four-year-olds right here, front and center. Okay, your kinder gonna go right there, right there, right there. You're gonna have to go right there. Okay, sixth graders. All right, how many in here know the song, If You're Happy and You Know It? All right, let's try that while we're waiting for everyone to get seated. If you're, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I can't hear you. If you're happy and you know it. And you know it, then your face will surely show it. Man, my preschoolers can sing louder than you. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Good job. I knew you had it in you. There's another fun song since it's Easter. It goes like this. For those of you who know, sing it with me. It's called Rise and Shine. It goes like this. So rise and shine and give God. Glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. How many heard that for the very first time? First time, first time, first time. All right, let's try it again. Here we go. So rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and Give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Very good. There's another fun song. It goes like this. Um, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Oh, that's the song. Joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? To say, and I'm so happy. Let's do it together. I am very happy. <laughs> I got it, I got it. Love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. Sit on attack, out, sit on attack, and if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack, out, sit on attack to stay, and I'm so happy, are you happy, and I'm so happy, I can't hear you sing, I have the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy, I have the love of Jesus in my heart, I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Where? I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? To stay. One more time. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Very good. Is it, I don't see it. Okay. Okay. Now, I need you guys to work with me this morning because this morning is a very special morning. Last Friday, we had a special day. It was called Good Friday. And on Good Friday... It was actually, and some of you were drawing a card this morning, it said Friday was very sad, but Sunday was very glad. It was sad on Good Friday because we understand that Jesus 
came from heaven, and he was on this earth for about 30 years. We celebrate his birth at Christmas, and he grew up in Nazareth, and he did lots of miracles when he was here, and lots of people listened to his teaching, and he came here to talk to people about the kingdom of God. We call that heaven. But he said, I'm here about my father's business, and I want to teach you about the kingdom of God. Well, there were some other religious people that didn't like it, and they didn't like him. And the Bible tells us that on Good Friday, he was crucified on a cross for claiming to be God. But we know that he is God the Son, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. Boys and girls, today we celebrate the fact that Jesus didn't stay on that cross in fact, we see a purple robe of majesty on top of the cross. But there is a story that happened from Friday to Sunday. And we want you to see a little bit of that story. And some of our youth are going to help portray that. And so I need you to close your eyes real quick. Close your eyes really tight. tight all eyes closed. Close your eyes. Close them tight. Tight, tight, tight. Close your eyes. Close them. I don't want to. No looking around. Close them. Okay, now you can open them. Now this is Mr. Andrew. Can you say hi, Mr. Andrew? And Mr. Andrew is our narrator. And he's going to narrate the rest of the story. We heard about Good Friday on Friday about how Jesus died on the cross. But all of us are going to die one day. And somebody might say, well, what's the big deal? Jesus died. The big deal is it didn't end there. The story lives on. So Mr. Andrew is going to tell the rest of the story. If you're good and you're listening, okay, turn up your listening ears. Young one, zip your mouth. No talking. Let's look. As Ms. Meyer says, we're going to read a story, and I want you to imagine everything that I'm going to say. Imagine yourself in the worst of all possible situations. Imagine yourself as one of the 12 disciples or as one of the women who followed Jesus. Imagine he is no longer among you because he died. You saw him die. You saw them bury him in the tomb. There is no doubt, there is no hope, and there is no future. You huddle together behind a locked door fearing those who have tortured and killed him will come and find you next. What will happen to you, to your family, to your friends? There is no doubt, no hope, no future. You heard him say when he was alive that the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified on the third day, and be ro raised again. But you have forgotten those words or at least they held no hope for you now. The horror of the crucifixion is still fresh in your mind. You see him and hear him in agony, dying right in front of you on the cross, where there was nothing you could do. You think all about, all about your part in all of it, and wonder, what could you have done differently? You have been frightened and hiding for days, but now, today is Sunday. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came, to, she came running to Simon Peter and to the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked inside at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciples who have reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. 
And as she wept, she bent over to look into this tomb and saw two white angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been once, at one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not realize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, thinking, oh, thinking he was the gardener, she said, in Aramaic, the word rabbi means teacher. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. And as she told them, he said that these things to her. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed, and they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, And with that, he breathed on all of them and said, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, meaning twin, one of the 12 disciples, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. Thomas, shaking his head, said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where his nails were I w and put my hands into his side, I will not believe you. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Through the door, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, speaking to Thomas, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Imagine yourself in the best of all possible situations. The Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was dead and is now alive. By the power of the living God, Jesus has risen from the dead and is alive forever. Now, you guys went on an Easter egg hunt, and I have some special eggs here. These are actually called resurrection eggs, and I need someone to come up and help me open an egg, and I'm just going to ask someone who, no, no, this is not, you have to put your hands down, put your hands down. I do not listen to people who are talking out loud. I'm the only one talking. I said, raise your hand quietly, and maybe I'll choose you. So, very quietly, this young lady, Jacqueline, would you, Jacqueline, would you come up? Is that your name? Ja Jocelyn. Jocelyn, I'm sorry. Come on up, Jocelyn. And Jocelyn's going to come up and open up an egg for me. And I'm going to see how much you guys know about the Easter story, because you've been listening to it in your classrooms. And Jocelyn, I want you to open up this first egg. It's blue. And let's see. Show everybody what it is. Oh, my goodness. What's in it, Jocelyn? A donkey. Does anybody know why a donkey would be in my Easter egg? He rode what? That's right. Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and that's when the whole week began. Very good. I need somebody else now. All right, this young boy here. Come on up. Come on up. He's, he's handy. Come on up. Come on up. And let's see what's in the next egg. The next egg, he's trying hard. He's having a hard time. It's purple just like, oh, there's, whoop. What is in that egg? A cup. Can you show him the cup? Why would there be a cup? Can someone tell me? Zach? Shh, 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 shh. Zach? I can't hear you. Go ahead. Shh. So, 
Yeah, just a moment, Zach. The cup was for the Feast of Passover, which they celebrated on Thursday night, and in it was grape juice, pure grape juice. And he took the cup and he took the bread and he told them that I'm about to die and this is my body and this is my blood. It really wasn't his body and blood. He was using it as a symbol and that's what the cup is for, to remind us about Passover because that's why they were there. Thank you, Bree. You may, you may be seated. Go ahead. Go sit down. All right, I need somebody else. Mr. Mr. Green. Mr. Green, can you give me one of your kids? All right, young lady. Carla. This is Carla. Carla, what's in there? Coins. There's three coins representing 30 pieces of silver. Show everybody. Turn around. Show everybody. Does anybody know why I would have 30 pieces of silver in there? Who would know? Do you know why? Yeah? Shh. Shh. Brighter. Be quiet. That's right. Judas was one of the 12 disciples, and he was upset with Jesus because Jesus wasn't doing what Judas wanted him to do. And he betrayed him, and the, then the high priest gave him 30 pieces of silver for turning in his best friend. Was that a nice thing to do? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. And that's what started the weekend off really badly for him. All right, young lady. Apples, come on up. Can you open this one for me? And... And Miss Carmen, would you pick a couple of kids from yours? Okay, apples, turn it around. Show everybody. What is it? A hand. A hand. Why would there be praying hands in my eggs? Anybody know? What's with the praying hands? Does anybody know why I have praying hands in here? Who knows? Go ahead. Why do I have praying hands? It is to pray, but why do I have it? I know, thank you. But you know what happened? After the Passover, after they ate dinner, they went into a beautiful garden, kind of like this, and they went to pray. And as they were praying, Jesus was in, in agony because he knew what was about to happen. And he asked his disciples to pray with him. Boys and girls, when you have a hard day or something bad has happened, the best thing you can do is to pray. Very good. What's your name, young man? I'm going to come down here. Hang on. Shh. No, me, me, me. I have big boys and girls here. Okay, here we go. I have another egg. Which, oop, that one got stuck. All right. What is in there? A rooster. A rooster. Why would I have a rooster in my Easter eggs? Bernice in the back? Shh, shh, shh. Really loud. Very good, Bernice. The Bible tells us that there was a trial that night when Judas betrayed him. Soldiers came in the garden when he was praying, and they took him away, and they put him on trial. And, G and Peter left him. It's okay, honey. It's okay. You can stand here. And what happened was that they went and Jesus said, the rooster will crow twice before you will deny me three times. Very, very good. You may be seated. Thank you, Stephen. Here you go. We've got another one to look at. Let's see who, which one. What is it? She got a whip. Why would there be a whip? Anybody remember? Why? It's something that hurts people. It's like worse than a belt. Why would there be a whip? Do you know? That's right. That's right, Ryder. That's right. Boys and girls, that night before they put Jesus on the cross, 
they whipped him, and that was very, very hurtful, and it hurt him a lot. What's your name? Ivan. Okay, Ivan, open that up and tell me what's inside, Ivan. <gasps> this is a crown of thorns, Ivan. The Bible tells us, put your hands down and listen. I need you to listen. The Bible tells us they put a crown of thorns on his head, and they mocked him, and they made fun of him. And they said, if you're the king of the Jews, if you're God's son, here, we'll give you a crown. We'll put a crown of thorns on your head. Do you think that felt good? No. They were really, really mean to Jesus. Let's see. This is, what's your name? Carlos. Carlos. Okay. Carlos is going to open up our next one. What's inside of that? He's got to open it up. Let's see, Aiden. What is it, Carlos? A cross. Show everybody. It's a cross, just like the one that's up there. After they had whipped Jesus and they put the crown of thorns on his head, they nailed him to a cross. It was very, very, very sad day. And he was... And he was on a cross between two thieves. And the two thieves were guilty. And they deserved to be on the cross. Was Jesus guilty, Carlos? No. No. Thank you, Carlos. Jesus was innocent. Jesus was the perfect Lamb of God. Boys and girls, shh, I hear talking. Here we go. We got a couple more eggs still. Shh. What's that? It's a spear. Show everybody. Show everybody. This is a spear that the Roman soldiers used when Jesus was up on the cross. They saw the nails in his hands, and, and they wanted to make sure that he was really dead. And so they took this spear, and they put it in his side. And the Bible says that water and blood came rushing out, meaning that he had already died. And they then took him down off the cross and that's what we call Good Friday. But as we saw here, the story didn't end there. Let's see what this is. Piece of cloth. Okay, why would I have a piece of cloth in my eggs? When they took him off the cross, what did they did do when they put him in a tomb? They, what? What did they do with the cloth? Go ahead. Yeah, they would clean him up, and they would wrap him up. In those days, they would wrap him up like a mummy. And this is the tomb. This is what it would look like. They would not bury them in the ground. They would put them in a big, like, hewn-out rock. And that's the kind of place that they would lay Jesus, all wrapped up in clean linens, and placed him in a tomb. You know, I've been to Israel and I've seen garden tombs very much like this. And even inside the tomb, they have a rock bed. Can you imagine that? It's a rock bed, and they put the body on this piece of rock. And then the stone is actually uphill, and when the body goes in, it goes downhill. So that's why it was so amazing that Jesus rose from the dead, because he could not have removed that stone and if, you, if anyone tried to move the stone, you know how many guys it would take, these big, strong guys? It would take probably six big old guys to move that heavy, heavy stone. Let's see. We've got something in here, Victoria. What's that, Victoria? It's a piece of rock. And what would the rock signify? That's right. It's for Victoria. See the tomb? That would be the rock that originally covered it. But what happened on Sunday morning? The angels moved the rock, and Jesus was alive. And he left the linens inside, just like the story told you. And Peter and the disciples, they saw the linens, and they saw that the rock was removed. And at first, you know what, boys and girls? At first, they thought that someone had stolen the body, just like Mary did. But then what they found out was Jesus came and saw them. I have one last one. 
You girls can go ahead and sit down. I have one last one. Go ahead and sit down. Thank you. <gasps> What's inside? Nothing. Nothing? Why would I have an empty egg here? <laughs> Young man? Exactly. He wasn't in the tomb anymore, right? The tomb was empty. Our Easter eggs are empty. Boys and girls, the reason why we have an egg hunt and we let you have Easter eggs on Sunday morning is because an egg is the symbol of what? New life. What comes, what comes after the egg? A chicken, right? A little chick is born from an egg. And the eggs symbolize new life. The Bible tells, uh, shh, I hear talking. Shh. The eggs symbolize new life. And Jesus said that he arose to pay the price for your sin. And we learned a Bible verse in some of our classes. It's called John 3.16. And if you know it, say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish or die, but have eternal life. That's John 3.16. And in John 3.16, in that, in that verse, it tells us that we have to do a couple of things to have new life. Shh, are you listening? It's as simple as A, B, C. Can you say A, B, C? A, B, C. A means that you have to admit that you're a sinner, that you have done stuff wrong. Has everybody in here done something wrong at some point? I know I have. We have all done stuff wrong. B is for believe. Believe in Jesus, that he died on the cross for you, but that he arose on the third day. You, did you know the Bible says that he was on this earth for 40 days and he saw over 500 people? Isn't that amazing? And then when he went off to heaven, when he went back to heaven, he said, your job is to go and tell people. And that's what the C is for. Confess. Confess that Jesus is Lord. He is the Son of God. The Bible says when you do those three things, admit, believe, and confess, he says you too will go to heaven. So let's remember those ABCs of Christianity. A is for what? Admit. Admit that you're a sinner, that you do bad stuff sometimes. B is for believe. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died on a cross and rose again. And C is for what? Confess. Confess that Jesus is Lord. That means he's the boss. He is the king. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and we celebrate his resurrection today. And that's what makes Christianity different than any other religion in the world because Jesus didn't stay on the cross, did he? Jesus is alive. He is risen. Can you say he is risen? He is risen. Let's pray and thank God that he sent Jesus on the cross to die for us, where we should have died. He took the punishment on the cross for our bad things so that one day we could live with him in heaven. Let's pray. Put your hands together and bow your heads and close your eyes so no looking around, just talking to God right now. This is called prayer. Repeat after me, dear God. Thank you for today. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. And I thank you that he rose again and that he lives forever in heaven. I admit that I'm a sinner, but I believe in you. And I know that you are the king of kings. And Lord of Lords, we love you very much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, boys and girls, we're going to...
go back into your classrooms, and I want you to talk to your teachers a little bit about the lesson this morning. We also have a little cupcake and something to drink. But wait, 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 stop. Don't move anywhere. I'm going to let you go one classroom at a time, and I'm going to ask my big kids to be 